Hello and welcome to the fundamentals of electrical power systems for biorefineries. In the next few minutes I will give you a comprehension about the electrical loads. Electrical loads are the driving force of the electrical power system and it is worthwhile to look how the loads have developed. The loads started in the early 1950s from low values and they increased to high values during the last year and there is a constant increase which is quite important to note that the load is increasing and therefore electrical grids need extension. The rate of the increase by the way is given by the red line here and the red line is more or less constant. It's slightly decreasing but nevertheless electrical loads are increasing by approximately 2% per year. To understand the principle of superposition of electrical loads, we look at the electric stove here. The electric stove will be switched on in the morning, at lunchtime and in the evening. When you look at the electrical consumption of a full household, you will find the electrical stove again. It is somewhere here, for example, at the lunch peak. But there are also other differential, other, diff other loads. To understand the superposition of electrical loads better, one can start with electrical consumption in a household, which starts in the morning when the electric stove is switched on to prepare the breakfast. Then we have a high peak of electrical consumption at lunchtime and some electrical consumption in the evening. In the whole household consumption, we find again the consumption of the electrical stove at lunch, in the evening and so on, but we also see there are further consumers of electrical energy, for example, a load that is switched on and switched off regularly, and that is the fridge. Also some other loads. If more than one household is superimposed, and we example take the load curve for 500 households, we again find this typical load peak at lunchtime and another load peak in the evening, which is decreasing gradually due to switching off all the appliances like switching off the television, the washing machine and so on. And if we turn to a large area, we see that there is still a peak at noon, a peak in the evening, the decrease of the load in the evening. But what is important here, we have some other consumers that fill in these valleys in the morning hours, in the afternoon hours, and that is the electrical consumption that we as human beings need to perform our work, to go to, to our jobs and so on. This daily load diagram can be understood by this typical example for load diagram. We start for the load diagram with the power that is consumed in a typical city, for example, versus the time. And that is given to 24 hours, so one day. Again, you can see here we have this peak at lunchtime, the peak in the evening, and also maybe a peak for the electrical water generation. And this is the load curve that goes up and down. And in order to process the data more easily, we turn to the duration line, which is derived from the load diagram by the so-called assorted load lines. How is this line obtained? So for example, why do we have a point here? So the question is, how long does this area exceed the consumption of 25 megawatts. This is a 25 megawatts line and that is exceeded for say eight hours during the day, another two hours during the evening and half an hour during the night and that all together adds up for something like 11 hours. Also from this load line we have two characteristic points, the maximum peak, the minimum peak, and what is important is that the surface below these lines, that is this area here, corresponds to the total energy that is consumed by this city or by this type of consumer. In this picture, we can see a load diagram that is derived from a typical, really measured consumer. This is a power recording of one day and the derived load curve. We see again the maximum power, the minimum power, and from this we can, from this area, we can determine the total power consumption. 
What is important for us as consumers, how much do we pay for electricity? And the electricity is measured by the city meter. And the electricity meter makes the integral of the power that is absorbed. So the integral of the power absorbed is the surface, the area below this line while the time is proceeding. So it is the integral that means the integral is has the steepest rise where the integrant is highest. So that is during the day hours. In the early morning hours, in contrast, the power consumption is low and this increase of the line is more or less flat. And in the evening, the total area under this curve is given as 36 kilowatt hours is the area below this load curve. So these are other typical examples. This example is the power consumption of a farm, where, for example, in the early morning hours, the cows are milked. In the evening, the cows are milked. At, at lunchtime, again, people prepare their food by, electric, by an electric stove. This very rough picture, which goes up and down, up and down, is the power consumption of a feeder of a railway station. And the railway section. So the trains, whenever the trains start, then you have a lot of electricity and power consumption. And when the trains stop, maybe you have something like backfeed of energy. And you see, again, the typical behavior of load curves, you have a lot of power consumption in the morning when people go to work, the commuters, in the evening when they come back. And the question is what happens during the nighttime when normally there is no personal traffic. This is the electrical consumption of electrical power of the trains, of the load trains. Since the electrical power consumption in uh, residential areas is very important, the electrical consumption of households has been investigated and one can see the differences between day, weekday and weekend and summer and winter and that is given by this chart. What is important and striking is there is a sharp increase in electrical power at 2200 hours. So these are the electrical heaters that prepare warm water and that is done during the evening in order not to put additional load on the grid during, for example, lunchtime. When electrical loads are superimposed, and this is important to have the correct rating of all the cables, overhead lines, transformers. Then you must determine what is the maximum load that this electrical grid has to supply. So if we have, for example, two loads, one has a peak in the morning, for example, a bakery, another load that has the peak during the daytime, if these are superimposed, the maximum peak is less than the sum of this peak and this peak. So this leads to the coincidence factor, which is always below one. So this was the chapter of the loads. I thank you very much. The next chapter will be about generation of electrical energy and electrical power. And for further information, please turn to the script. Thank you very much.